Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. This lesson's about rate of change, slope, positive slope, and negative slope. And we're going to start with a multiple choice question. Choose either A or B. A. These babies are being forced to learn math. Or B. You have a babysitting business. You have a babysitting business and you earn $10 per hour. Well, that's a unit rate. You earn $10 per one hour. But it's also a rate of change. $10 per one hour. An increase in your labor of one hour results in an increase in your earnings of $10. For instance, if you work for one hour, you've got 10 bucks. But let's say you increase that to two hours. Now you got two times 10 bucks or 20 bucks. Or three hours results in $30. Four hours results in $40. Each time the hours increased by one, the dollars increased by 10. We could turn this into a formula. We could call X the number of hours worked. And we could call Y the dollars earned. Then we could have a formula that Y, the dollars earned, equals 10 times X, the hours worked. And that 10 is our rate of change. It's also our slope. M is the mathematical symbol for slope. So in this equation, M equals 10. We could graph this equation, Y equals 10X. We could create a table, input some X values, figure out what the Y values were, plot those points, and then draw a line. And we'd have a line that represented Y equals 10X. Now let's think about this line. Y. Y is an amount of money. Y is how much money you've made babysitting. And X is the amount of time you spent babysitting to earn that amount of money. So, for instance, if we had this point right here, that represents one hour of babysitting and you earn $10. If we go to two hours of babysitting, we add one hour to our, the amount of time we babysat, we add an additional $10 to our earnings. So that's a very steep slope. Our Y value increases a whole lot for each increase in our X value. Now we calculate that slope with a formula. Slope, or M, equals rise over run. And to calculate that, you need to pick two points and figure out how much it rises and how much it runs. And it's best to pick points where the line grows through the intersection of two grid lines. For instance, if I got an X and a Y line, I want to pick a point where they cross. And here's a point where they cross, and here's another point where they cross. So I'm going to pick those two points and calculate the slope of the line. How much does it rise? Well, it rises 10, and it rises a positive 10. It's going up towards the larger numbers. And how much does it run? Well, it runs 1, a positive 1, towards the larger x values. So my slope, my m, is a rise of 10 over a run of 1, or a slope of 10. Now you try this one. 
hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. What's the slope of this line? Well, first, let's pick a couple of points on the line and figure out the rise and the run between the two points. And we want to pick points where the uh, uh, line crosses the intersection of a couple of grid lines. Now, we need to get both the rise and the run as we move from point 1 to point 2. We'll call this point 1 and we'll call this point 2. So my rise would be up to there and my run would be over to there. I have a rise of 1 a run of 4. And they're both positive numbers because I'm moving up towards bigger numbers along the y-axis and then to the right towards bigger numbers along the x-axis. So my slope is rise over run or 1 over 4. My slope is 1 quarter. Another way to calculate slope is to use the coordinates of any two points on the line. That bottom point is at 1, 10. And the next point is at 2, 20. Well, slope is rise over run. Rise. Rise is moving along the y-axis. Those are my y terms. I move up 10 units to get from 10 to 20. But if I subtracted 10 from 20, I'd come up with those 10 units. Same is true of the x. My run is moving along the x-axis, and I'm moving from this point over to this point. And that's just a run of 1. But that, one, that run of 1 is defined by my x values. My 2 minus my 1 equals 1. So I could calculate the slope of this line by calculating the change in y and dividing it by the change in x. Now I'm going to start with the top point, this point up here. And my y value is 20, so I'll put the 20 there, and then I'll subtract the y value for the other point. Then I'll do the same with x, but I've got to start at the same point. My first x value is 2, and then I'm going to subtract my other x value, 1. So I get 20 minus 10 over 2 minus 1, or the slope equals 10 over 1. Now I could go the other direction. I could start at this point and subtract the y value to get to this point. Let's try that. The y value at this point is 10, and I'm going to subtract the y value at the other point, 20. So I get 10 minus 20. Now I'm going to do the same with my x values. 1 minus 2. 1 minus 2. And 10 minus 20 equals minus 10. And 1 minus 2 equals minus 1. So going from the bottom number to the top number, I get minus 10 over minus 1. And going from the top number to the bottom number, I get 10 over 1. Are those different numbers? No. 10 over 1 equals 10. Minus 10 divided by minus 1 also equals 10. So my slope is positive 10. Well, here's our equation for our babysitting business and the line that represents that equation. Again, y, or the amount of money you earn, equals 10 times x, the number of hours you work. Well, fortunately for you, you've got a dear old Aunt Susie. And Aunt Susie always gives you a $5 tip. She always pays you more than $10 an hour. She always gives you $5 extra. So for Aunt Susie, your earnings equals $10 times the number of hours you babysit plus an extra $5 tip. Now I wonder how that changes the equation uh, or the line for the equation. 
Well, actually, I don't wonder. I know, and I'm going to show you. In this situation, we start earning nothing. And when we've worked zero hours, we've earned zero money. So the, the line starts at zero, zero, the origin. But with Aunt Susie, we earn an extra $5. We know we're going to get this $5 no matter how many hours we work. So we don't start at zero. We start at $5. And the line goes up and doesn't start at zero. It starts at five. But the slope hasn't changed. The slope is still 10. For each increase of one hour, we still go up in earnings by $10. Well, here's another line, and we need to calculate the slope. I've already picked a couple of points where the line goes through the intersection of grid lines. And now I just got to calculate the rise and the run. Because my slope equals rise over run. Well, if I start at the bottom point, I rise 3, and I rise positive. I'm going towards the bigger y numbers. So it's positive 3 rise. And I run negative 1. Because I'm running not towards the larger x values, but towards the smaller uh, x values. I'm really subtracting 1 from the x value of my first point. So my rise is positive 3, and my run is negative 1. So my slope equals 3 over negative 1, or negative 3. This line has a negative slope. Here's another line, and it's got a positive slope. And it's pretty easy to tell the difference. A positive slope rises as you move left to right, and a negative slope falls as you move left to right. On the red line, as I move from the left towards the right, the line's rising. On the green line, as I move from the left towards the right, the line's falling. Try this one. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to the answer. Well, this time they give us the coordinates of a couple of points on the line, and they ask us to calculate the slope. And you remember that slope is rise over run. And rise is, is a change up and down the y-axis. So the, the y-coordinates are going to tell us how we changed along the y-axis. If we got the difference in the two y-values, we'd know what our rise was. And our run is changes along the x-axis. And if we get the difference between our x-values, we'll know the run. And we need to be consistent. We need to move from point 0.1 to point 0.2, or we can move from point 0.2 to point 0.1. But we need to be consistent, and I'm going to choose to move from point 0.1 to point 0.2. So I'll get my x or my y value from point 0.1 and subtract my y value from point 0.2. And then I'll do the same thing with my x values. I'll get the x value from point 1 and subtract the x value for point 2. So my slope equals the change in y divided by the change in x. The point 1 y is minus 6. And then I'm going to subtract the value of the point 2 y, which is minus 18. And I'm going to put that over the difference in my uh, x values. The point 0.1 x value was 3. The point 0.2 x value was 7. So it's 3 minus 7. Now minus 6 minus minus 18 is the same thing as minus 6 plus 18. And then I can simplify that again. Minus 6 plus 18 equals positive 12. 3 minus 7 equals negative 4. 
So my slope equals 12 over negative 4, or negative 3. Well, look at this line. That's a horizontal line. It's really not going up or down. It's just staying level. It really has very little, if any, slope. Actually, it has no slope. If we were to calculate the slope, we'd calculate the rise, and it doesn't go up. So the rise is 0. And we divide that by any run. In this case, I picked 3. And 0 divided by 3 equals 0. A horizontal line has a slope of 0. Here's a vertical line. And it's got a huge slope. It goes straight up. What would happen if I calculated that slope? Well, let's do that. My slope would, would be an infinite rise divided by no movement at all from left to right. And an infinite rise divided by 0 is an undefined number. So the slope of a vertical line is undefined. That's our lesson on slope and rate of change. I hope you learned a lot. Now it's time to test your skills. Go to www.mastermath.info and you'll find worksheets and quizzes there to make sure you understand this subject. I hope you had a great time, I hope you learned a lot, and I hope we see you again real soon.